This is the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge, round four, week three. This week, we're getting our script together. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity and in pursuit of that we also create comics at least i do hopefully you guys are too i figure you might otherwise you might not be here if you weren't interested in making comics and if you're interested in making comics uh, then this is the place to be because we talk a lot about that. What we are doing right now is the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. If you're not familiar with that, this is a challenge that was started way back when by Kevin Cross. And the gist of it, what you got to do is, all you have to do is put aside 30 minutes a day to work on your own personal comic book project. And once you do that, you also have to let people know about it in order to hold yourself accountable. So that means posting on social media or any other way you can do videos like this like I'm doing on YouTube. Now I am doing them every week. I'm doing these weekly updates, but the only reason I'm doing that is because I've already done the challenge. This is like I said in the beginning, this is my fourth round. So the first two rounds I did exactly as I was supposed to do. I did a video every single day, uh, but now, uh, now that I've kind of proven to myself that, that I can do this, and, and really, that's what it is. It's all its all for you. It's for yourself, your own personal journey. But I advise you, and again, this is sort of the way the challenge is structured. You spend at least that 30 minutes a day, every day, for 100 days straight, and then you you know, you know vlog about it, you blog about it, you, you, you t mention it on social media, like I said, in order to hold yourself accountable. That's, that's how it works. So anyway, because I'm doing a little different, I'm doing every week, this is a weekly update. This is my third week doing this. So I I started beginning of the year, I started January 1st, and I'm also doing a little different. Don't think I'm slacking off because I'm only putting out one video a week. The fact is, I am doing it a little more than that 30 minutes a day. I have vowed that I am going to put in at least one hour a day. Now, really, even an hour a day, it's not quite a lot. I mean, it's it's in that if you put an hour a day, you may, most likely, you won't even have your comic finish at the end of that 100 days. But that's not necessarily the goal. It's just to build habits, you know? Once you decide, because a lot of people, they, they just put it off or whatever, and they don't get around to it. And even though, you know, 30 minutes, the, the reason the reason why it's 30 minutes is everyone can find that 30 minutes a day to work on their you know, personal project, whether it's comic or whatever it is, if you're writing a book or whatever, just take that time and build that habit. Once you're in a habit of, oh no, I'm gonna work on this every single day, then you can kind of up the ante and you can go up to an hour a day. And I, you know, some days uh, this weekend, uh, in order to get where I wanted in the challenge, I spent uh, quite a bit more than just that hour a day. So if you can spend more, great, but you gotta set that minimum. So that is the challenge in a nutshell. Now, if you're new to this challenge, you may be asking, well, what what are you working on? Well, my comic, the thing that I'm doing for the challenge is my comic book, Young and the Dead. So far, I already have four issues. I am working on at least uh, the writing portion of, of two issues, actually, uh, issue number five and issue number six. And once I get those done, then I'm gonna uh, just start working on the, you know, the actual artwork for issue number five. So that's that, you know, that's what I'm working on. Uh, if you're not familiar with my comic, it, like I said, it's called Young and the Dead. It is a kids versus zombie story. So it is in the vein of Goonies. It's like Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. So if you like all those old kid action movies like Goonies, Monster Squad, Explorers, E.T., Stand By Me, that kind of thing, if you're a, a more modern representation would be Stranger Things. If you're a fan of Stranger Things, you kind of, you'll probably like this. So just imagine Goonies, but with zombies. So that's what it is. Kids versus zombies. It's a lot of fun. And I'm just having a blast getting back to the writing part of that. Uh, Cause it's been a while. It took a little break. I'm back. And uh, that's why I'm doing these updates to let you guys know where I'm at. So where am I at? Well, if you watched last week, you'll know that I was working on plotting my story, just getting all the, the story points out, knowing exactly where I'm going to go with it and how I'm going to end it because this is the conclusion of my story. It won't conclude in this issue that I'm writing now, issue five. Uh, but like I said, well, I'm actually, like I said, I'm writing issue five and six. So it'll conclude in issue six. So anyway, last week I mentioned because I had finished the plotting and everything out, got that outline done, that uh, the next step traditionally would be scripting, you know, going into, you know, writing the script and, and formalizing all that stuff out. 
but I thought, well, maybe what I'll do before I even go to scripting is to do some preliminary thumbnails and just kind of jot that out so I can kind of use that as a guide just to visualize where I wanted to go once I started scripting. And I had never done that before, and in the end, I opted not to do that. I'm still going to do thumbnails, but that's going to be after I do the script. And most people, not everyone works like that where they'll do, you know, the drawings before scripting. Typically, I think they do it probably the way I do. But the, the cool thing about it is there's no right or wrong way to go about scripting your comic. However, we're going to talk about a few different ways you can do it if you want, and you can take those and you can choose one of those, uh, or you can try them both out, or you can do an entirely, uh, you know, you can do your own, uh, you can approach it your own way, however you want to do it, that's fine. But I just want to give you some different ideas of different ways you can script something. So speaking of the script, the other thing I threw out there, I said, you know, based on the last time I did the challenge, I said I was, at this point, I had finished the script, and I kind of wanted to be ahead of that, but after I remember back, I think I was putting in more time on the comic. I think I don't think I had as much stuff going on as I do now, so I think I was able to do a little more. I still want to catch up, and I still want to go beyond uh, and and surpass what I was where I was that point I was at at the last time I was taking the challenge when I was working on you know issue issue number four. So and I think I can still do that when I when I get to the art because I'm going to do some digital stuff, and I'm going to hopefully that'll speed up the process of getting the art, so it's not going to take as long. But I said, you know, last last time around, the last time I was doing the challenge at week three, I had completed my script. Um, this, and then, then I said, well, it would be nice to, if I could complete scripts for issue five and six. Well, I didn't quite do that, but I am happy to say that I have the full first draft of the script for issue number five in the can. It is done. And again, this is first draft, so there can be there's going to be some revisions and things, but for the most part, it's there. It's you know, there's always going to be revisions. And I also have a little bit done on issue six, which I'm continuously doing right now. Uh, and I won't start any of the artwork or anything until I finish issue six. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to sort of punch up the dialogue. Once I have the, the both uh, issues scripted, issue five and six, then I'm going to kind of go back and make sure everything connects right with each issue and all the the, uh, you know, my all my I's are dotted, my T's are crossed, and 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 all that kind of stuff, and just and like I said, punch up the dialogue because I would really want want that to. You know, that's one of my favorite things to do. So in some cases here, I just put some stuff down. I, I mean, I like what I have, but I think it could be a little better. Um, but I didn't want to just dwell on that while I was writing, like, oh, and just sit there and think, what's a better word for this? Or would they, this character say this? And so I think I got a good idea, but after I'm done, then I'm going to go back and, and make sure that that dialogue is spot on. So a little more to report on with issue number five or the writing of issue number five, where I'm at, where the story is going, what you might expect if you, you know, if I was to finish it and put it out there for you guys, just so you know. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way this is going and how everything concludes, how, how this particular issue wraps up and there's, a, you know, spoiler alert, well not spoiler too much, but there's a pretty big cliffhanger here. That's why I'm writing both these stories together because I'm hoping that it won't take me as long to get the next one out because I'd hate to leave you guys hanging for a, for a long time after you read this. But, so these two issues are really fast paced. I mean, every thing starts to come together and then it's like bam there's a scene and then it just keeps it keeps going back and forth and hopefully that's a good thing hopefully that's going to keep people excited because you know when you think of action stories or even action in movies typically towards the end that's when everything starts to you know there's just so much going on and with issue five we get to that point in the story where the, the odds are stacked against our heroes it seems like all is lost and there's like no hope and the, and we kind of get that point if you've seen like empire strikes back you know han solo gets frozen at the end and Carbonite, uh, Luke loses his hand, he finds out who his father is. We get to that point in that story and trying to orchestrate it so all that stuff happens when we get to that point and the timing so it ends at that point and then in the next issue you know we'll see what happens. Do the do the heroes somehow rally and and or or is it just is it all is it all bad news from there? We'll find out as we, as I continue to write that. But that's kind of where I am with the story. So um, yeah, it's 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 really 
I, you can tell I'm excited because it's just been so long since I've worked on this book and I'm just excited to get back to it and I'm excited where it's going and I can't wait to start you know illustrating this but first things first we gotta we gotta script it all first so why don't we talk a little bit about scripting and how you can approach when you get to that point uh, in your story you got your outline done you're ready to start scripting again there's there's so many different ways you can go about this we've talked about the Marvel method or we mentioned the Marvel method but maybe we'll get into that on another uh, another one of these episodes maybe even next next week we might talk a little bit about that because I'll still be in the scripting mode so but for me personally I like to work from a full script now there isn't really a standardized script at least that I'm aware of I've never you know worked for you know the big publishers or whatever I'm always I've always done indie comics for the most part or client projects but as far as I know there's not one standardized script and I've seen a lot of different script formats and I've created a lot of different script formats I've used a few and I actually have have a few that are available. I've got this one here. Um, this is this is what I call my script format number one, and this is available for free in the Comic Maker Starter Kit. You can download that at CircWorks.com, and it comes it comes with a number of comic book tools, you know, brushes, fonts, all that kind of stuff. It also has you know page templates, uh, tons of stuff. It's free. You go there, you sign up, you get it, and then uh, then it, you can get this this particular format here. This is. This is designed for comic books. It's designed, it's a it's comic book script. So the way this is laid out, of course, we've got the, the book title, the, the issue number, all that stuff right up here, page one, you, you know, you've got your draft number, all that. And here in the uh, left-hand column, you've got a column for panels. So if you're not familiar with comics, those little squares that we refer to those as panels. Uh, this first one, it says zero because these are just some instructions. I'm kind of talking about how to use it. But, but basically, you're going to start at 1.1, and that's going to be panel number one. And then the other point one, that's your first word balloon. And then you've got your, your second word balloon and so on and so forth and everything. Then here, you've got the description, which is going to describe what's going on in the scene. So if you're working with an illustrator, if you're a writer and illustrator, um, this can help you out, but also it can inform the illustrator. Oh, what's going on? What do you need to draw? What do you need to relate in this particular scene? And then, of course, over here is the caption dialogue. So caption meaning if it, if you know the description will tell you what's going on, but if we're also adding some additional descriptions in the actual story, where it might say you know it is dark and stormy night. And uh, but in the description it might say exterior establishing shot the night is dark and stormy or something like that. But if you're actually gonna put that in, in text in a caption, it will be here in the caption dialogue uh, uh, column. And of course, you know, here we go and we've got our anything else here. We've got our character. It'll say in bold, I've got what character is speaking. And then it, if there's any additional thing, it says shouting, just so we know, you know, this is this is loud and everything or whatever. They're, you know, you could probably tell that from the exclamation point. But anyway, so shouting and then it's got the actual di dialogue that's going to go in the word balloon or in this particular one. Our character's name is Wild Thing, as far as this example goes. And then it says, this is none of your this is none of your concern Cretan and then and then we kind of go on from there Anyway, this is the template that I have available for free at CircWorks.com. It's part of this Comic Maker Starter Kit. Uh, but you know what? I've used this before, and I, I do like this, and I think it's pretty. I think it's a good format for comics. But I tend to go off of this format here, which this is available in the Comic Maker Toolkit, which is another toolkit. This one there is a cost for it, but it's got tons more stuff. All of that stuff I mentioned before and more, and it's got a few more options. Uh, and you know, to be honest, you you could probably come up with this. You could probably find a similar script. It's pretty much what people use. It's pretty standard. What you might see, like you know, a screenplay, the way it's done. But just for my purposes, this is the this is the format that I'm using. Uh, and I start off uh, this way. And the way you can kind of do it uh, to cater it to comic books, the title of the book, issue number, and everything. They start with page one in bold. Uh, and then I've got the panels listed. Panel, this is panel zero, panel one, panel two, panel zero again. This is just in if you if you download if you get the comic maker toolkit, this again is just the instructions, the introductory to talk about. So really we would start with panel one, and then uh, then I've got my description written here. So this says bird's eye view. We look upon a large metropolitan city, dilapidated and overrun with plant life. And then 
Then what I do when we go into the captions, I've got a number for the caption. So it's just one point and then I put the word caption. So we know it's a caption and not a di you know, not dialogue box or not anyone actually speaking. It says the concrete jungle. So then we go with panel two. And this is, again, I go into my description. Wide shot, our heroes peering down at the street below where Dr. Paradox has taken a hostage. And then I've got down below that, we've got our first word balloon. So it's one. And this is, it says wild thing, shouting. It says let the girl go paradox. So it's it's pretty much the same, kind of the same script. I think I changed, I must have changed the dialogue around a little bit from the other one I showed you. But anyway, so just go down there like that. And then, you know, if we go further down, I'll start splitting these. So we've got here in page two, panel three, we've got wild thing. Uh, let me, I try to find, well, here, I'll, I don't know if I have an example in this, but so if I've got, if I've got two word balloons, cause you don't want to cram all this stuff in, inside one word balloon. So what I'll do is usually it'll, it might say wild thing and it says, uh, I don't know if he says, look out. All right. And then, then in the next line, he might say, he might go on with another line, but you don't want that all in one word balloon. So, you know, what, what I'll do is just I'll have one and then a wild thing, what he says first in the first word balloon and then two and then wild thing again. And what he says in the second word balloon. And basically it kind of goes on from there, but I just wanted to share these script formats with you. Again, this is the one I use. The other one also works great. Like I said, as far as I know, now there may be some comic book companies or some editors that prefer a certain format, but there's really no standardized format for writing a comic book script. Like I said, back in the day, I don't know how Marvel does it too much anymore. They had that Marvel method where they didn't even have a script. They just went off of their, their initial outline and then they went in and, and just went in the word balloons and wrote all the dialogue and all the caption boxes and everything like that. But if you're like me, you want something a little more structured, if it's easy to find out, especially I think, you know, I don't know. I was going to say, especially if you are working with somebody else, it may, you know, help them out knowing, you know, what to write. But that Marvel method's pretty solid. And like I said, maybe we'll talk about that on the next episode. But for now, that's kind of what's going on with my book. Also some different options on how to approach your script, but you can do it any way you want. But hopefully that stuff helps you out. But if you got a different way of putting your script together or, or formatting it or anything, I want to know, let me know in the comments section. And uh, like I said, no right or wrong way. It's all personal to your own taste and the team if you're working with the team. But uh, that's all I got to say today, this week for 100 Days of Ming Comics. This is round three. We'll be back for round four next week. I'll see you then. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at CircWorks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to CircWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.